Welcome to day three of our 40 days of preparation. This week, our theme is repentance and obedience. I'd like to direct your attention to the book of Matthew, chapter number seven, and like us to read verses 21 through 23. What does it say? Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of lawlessness. What does this mean? This portion of scripture is one of the most sobering passages in all of the Bible to me. It can be downright intimidating. One reason for this is the passage is coming straight from the lips of Jesus himself. Another reason is that Jesus says this sobering pronouncement on that day, which is the day of judgment, which means this is it. There's no more opportunity. Lastly, not all, but many on that day of judgment who think they know Jesus will hear Jesus say these words, I never knew you, even though they prophesied in his name, cast out demons in his name, and did many mighty works. You would think after all that, they would have a saving relationship with Jesus. But Jesus says to them, depart from me, for you are workers of lawlessness. It was lawlessness because what was done, no matter how good it may have appeared, was not the will of the Father for them. The tragic result was that they could not enter the kingdom of heaven, which means that the lake of fire was their eternal home. Jesus is saying that it's not enough to make a one-time confession of faith in him or even to go through life referring to Jesus as Lord, Lord, and not do the will of his Father. Repentance is to radically change your mind or to do an about face. But John the Baptist adds that true repentance is to be accompanied with fruits in keeping with repentance, Luke 3 and 8, which is a change in behavior. If our repentance was really an about face, we're no longer walking after our own will, but after the will of the Father. Jesus modeled this radical lifestyle over and over again, as he said, not as I will, but as you, Father God, wills. To do otherwise is to follow the sin of the first Adam. What does this mean to us? We do not want to be fooled on this issue. It governs our eternity. Satan, this world, and our flesh will attempt to fool us by lulling us into thinking what we are doing and saying is okay. But the question is, is it the will of God for us? Are we constantly checking in with Father God, His Word, and the Holy Spirit? to know the truth that will set us free. Are we becoming more like the world in which we live or more like Jesus? Have we been around sin so much that we do not even smell its stench anymore? Are we calling what the Bible says is evil good and what it says is good old fashioned? Working and performing for the Lord may mean nothing if it's not prompted by the right attitude and a desire to sincerely please our Lord and to strive to be in the center of his will. Like Martha, we can work for the Lord and find that all the work we are doing is not what he wants, but spending time with him like Mary did is what he's after. It's in moments like these that we get to hear and learn his voice. If we're not attended attentive to our relationship with the Lord, then we are just simply working for him, but not having a relationship for him. And we could find ourselves far away from him. We cannot judge our relationship, our relationship with the Lord by our own standards. Only he can tell us. 
and does so by his word and his spirit. Keep in mind that the parable of the sower in the sea, only one out of four soils was good enough to be fruitful in Mark 4. With the ten virgins, only five wise went in, but the unwise five virgins, the door was shut. And listen to this. And it was said to them, I do not know you. Response. This passage can be very discouraging, but it need not be. First, Jesus is letting us know about this horror. Listen to this. Before it happens. So those who want to do something about it have time to do something about it. Psalms 137 says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and then lead me in the way everlasting. Second, Jesus is letting us know how our obedience to the will of the Father evidences our faith and our true repentance. Three, Jesus is letting us know that salvation is about having a personal relationship with Jesus. Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Listen to this. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. In other words, if we not only hear his voice, but open the door, then the Lord will come in and we will have relationship. But how many times do we hear the knock and not open the door? And therefore, we lose a chance to have a relationship with our Savior. Let's come before the Lord and ask him to help us to be honest about ourselves. Let us come before him and ask him to show us our heart, where we are. Even if our heart is desperately wicked, can we come before the Lord and ask him to show our hearts and to radically change us? Where you need to repent, let's just repent, but repent in faith and believe for his mercy and the full completion of the work he started in our life. Let's commit to letting God do all he wants to do with us. Let's present our desires, needs, and sins to him and declare, and declare that though my flesh longs for things that it should not have, by faith I crucify it. And with my mind and spirit, I declare I only want God's ways. So let your will be done in my life. Help me, Lord, to keep you and your word ever before me, that I will become more like you and can hear you call me like your child. I commit that whatever you show me, I will receive, I will accept, and I will act on it, no matter the cost.